What is going on guys? Gavin here and today we are trying to revive the Telemans deck. So this deck got hit very hard on the last ban list and honestly I think that's a very good thing. You know this deck was very oppressive when we had Kikalos and we had all these names at 3 and the Ishizu package was also fully powered. So now this deck is a lot weaker and we have to be a lot more creative with this deck and add in other types of mill engines. So the way we are going to try and play this deck today is with a mixture of some pretty interesting trap cards namely Needlebug Nest. Paleozoic Dynamistress, Paleozoic Morella, and Rise to Full Height. We'll get to those cards in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. To start, we are playing triple copies of Telemann's Rhino Heart. This card is still quite a nice starter in the deck. Uh, honestly, you are probably not going to want to send one of the three Shiren, Havnus, or Murley from your deck to the graveyard initially because there's nothing really good to fuse into anymore. Rather, you're going to send the Telemans Keshtira from deck to graveyard so that you can start milling some cards. Uh, when Telemans Keshtira is sent to the graveyard, you can mill two, and you can get your mill engine going that way. Obviously, we are playing one of each of the original three dark Telemans main deck monsters in Shiren, Havnus, and Murley. These cards are super broken in their own right and definitely deserve to be at one, and we are forced to manage the resources of these cards much better now. Then we are playing triple copies of Telemans Keshtira. Uh, this card is really essential for the game plan of this deck now, um, and you want to be trying to use it every single turn. Basically, you can special summon this card, then banish one tier elements or cash tier monster from your hand or graveyard, and then mill three cards on its special summon. And if it is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can also mill two cards. So this card really will help you mill five cards every turn if you're using both of its effects, and that's um, we definitely need as much mill power as we can get in this deck. Speaking of mill power, we're playing two copies of Scream because it's a good card to mill and it is a good card to start getting your mill engine going. And then triple copies of Pearl of Rhino because this card is as important as ever in this deck because we have, once again, very limited access to Shiren, Havnus, and Murley. Then we are playing two copies of Sulik. Sulik is one of the ways that you can interact with your opponent on their turn, being a effect negating card that also allows you to send a tier limits from your field to the graveyard is super good for disrupting your opponent. Unfortunately, since the Trap Tricks deck is out now, this card uh, really struggles to be impactful against that matchup, but still think it's a super solid card to play in the deck. One copy of the Raysoth. Raysoth is a secondary field spell that we can search off of terraforming and also gets us access to Kishtira Fenrir or Kish uh, tier limits Kishtira. And I think this card is super nice because, uh, you know, searching out Fenrir, Fenrir allows you to special summon itself for free as long as you control no monsters, and then you can search out a copy of Telemans Keshtira, which is super good because, um, you know, it helps you get your mill engine going. So this card is like a secondary way of doing your, uh, getting to your Keshtira engine, which I think is super cool. Then we are playing triple copies of Foolish Burial Goods. This card is really nice in the deck because we have plenty of good targets to send, namely Telemans Sulik and Trivakarma. Trivakarma is very essential in the deck because it's an alternative way of accessing our tier limits field spell and also um, can search us, you know, tier limits Sulik or tier limits Scream. Um, so Foolish Barrel Goods has become super flexible in this deck and I love cards that are super flexible like that. Um, then one, obviously the one terraforming to search out either Perezos or Perla Rhino. And then for our trap cards, we are playing Triple copies of Needle Bug Nest. This card says Mill 5 in a deck that loves to mill. I think that is super good. Obviously, you know, trap cards are a little bit slow, but I think it's definitely worth playing this card. Uh, triple copies of Dynamistress. Dynamistress has its discard part of the card built into the card effect so that we can actually plus off of sending our tier limits monsters from our hand to the graveyard, which is super nice, on top of banishing a card that our opponent controls. Triple copies of Morella. Morella is pretty nice. It only foolish as a trap card, but a lot of the times you can just foolish for your Sulik, and then use Sulik to search Havnus, and so you have access to Havnus on your opponent's turn so that you can mill three cards and hopefully get something good off of that. And these cards are, you know, we do use the effect to summon these cards from the graveyard pretty often because we do play quite a lot of trap cards, and then, you know, that can help us get access to Totally Awesome, Paleozoic, Opabinia, and Sprite Sprint. Then we are playing one copy of the Backjack. I think Backjack is super good, you know, just being able to stack your deck and then uh, send one card from the top of your deck to the graveyard. Uh, and if it's a normal trap, you can set it. So if you find maybe a Needle Bug Nest or a Paleozoic Trap or a Teal Elements Monster, that effect is super strong. Trivikarma is just one of it we are playing in here. Hopefully we mill it or we can send it off of the Foolish Burial Goods. 
to get access to any card that mentions Visa Starfrost uh, in its text, which is super insane. Triple copies of Rise to Full Height. This card really helps slow the game down. We are playing a more grindy deck, and once you can get this card set up in your graveyard, you can use it to like protect your windows and just like protect your important boss monsters and really just slow the game down to a grind that this deck can excel in. And then one copy of each Hell Shadal Hollow, Shadal Beast, and Shadal Squamata. These cards are all really nice to mill. Hell Shadal Hollow is sort of like an honorary tier elements monster because when it's sent to the graveyard you can mill cards off the top of your deck equal to the amount of different attributes on the feud field so if there are you know like three or more attributes on the field this card is insane uh, obviously should all beast gives us a free draw and squamata can send one of these other two should all cards from our deck to the graveyard and then for going second since uh we are going to struggle a little bit going second we're playing two copies of gamma seal and two copies of lava golem to tribute over whatever our opponent has so that is it for the main deck 44 cards wish i could make it smaller but i really couldn't find any way to do so so let's go ahead and get into the extra deck okay to start for the extra deck we are playing a single copy of masquerina to tag into a link monster of choice during our opponent's turn those link monsters being sprite sprint nightmare unicorn and mech knight crusade avermax Sprint is in here to guarantee us access to sending Murley to the graveyard, Nightmare Unicorn for premium spot removal, and Avermax for being an incredible obstacle for opponents to get over, especially if you make it with the Mascarena. Then one copy of Opabinia to search out our Paleozoic traps, and also this card allows us to activate them from hand, which is absolutely absurd. One copy of the Totally Awesome to also make with uh, our level 2 monsters, because they are all going to be Aquas. One copy of the Time Thief Redoer to use Shiren on our opponent's turn. This card detaches for effect, which is incredibly rare, but incredibly useful in the deck. And then one copy of Zeus. Uh, sometimes we can make this card and wipe our opponent's board. The Mud Dragon of the Swamp as a fusion target for our tier limits monsters. And two copies of Winda for making with our Shadal monsters. This card can definitely shut down turns, especially if you make it. And awkward points in your opponent's combo. Uh, you know, they're probably going to have to just pass on whatever they got because of Windows Floodgate effect. One copy of the Garura for drawing, one copy of Draco Stapalia once we got some fusion monsters in the graveyard, and two copies of the Clyde Heart for making um, to disrupt our opponents during their turn. And as spot removal, you know, the shuffling into the deck is one of the best forms of removal in the game. So this card is super, super nice, especially when you have it with the Pearl Rhino. You effectively remove two cards from your opponent's field. So for the side deck, we are playing triple copies of Judgment, one copy of Canadia, triple copies of Evenly Match, two copies of Heartbeat, triple copies of Book of Eclipse, and triple copies of Nibiru. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into a game. Okay, so for this first game, we are going to go ahead and open up the Needlebug Nest, Hell Shadal Hollow, Lava Golem, Rise to Full Height, and Marilla. And we are playing against Blue Eyes, which I know isn't the most competitive deck, but it's really hard to find competitive matches on EDO Pro. And I hate playing on Dueling Book anymore just because of how time consuming it is. So we're just going to go ahead and see how this match turns out. We are going to go ahead and set three cards since we are going first. You know, all our traps card. It's not like we can do anything with the Hell Shadal Hollow or the Lava Golem. So let's see what we can do with this. So, as soon as our opponent's turn begins, we are going to shotgun the Morella, sending the Sullick, and I like this play a lot because it allows you to search out the Havnus, so hopefully we mill something good with the Havnus when the time comes. He's going to go ahead and summon out the Sage with Eyes of Blue. We're going to activate Havnus to summon it, mill three cards. We hit the Tier Elements Cash Tier, so we're going to be able to mill two more cards here. And we hit the Backjack, and Backjack is going to stack the top of our deck. We're going to activate the backjack, reveal a rise to full height, so we didn't hit the best off of backjack since uh, rise to full height isn't the most impactful card to be setting here, especially since we already have one, but really banking on this needle bug nest being able to hit something good for us. So he's going to send the white zone of legends to the hand to get the search, and then he's going to summon out the blue eyes uh, alternative white dragon. He's going to go ahead and pop the havenus, and since uh, we don't really have a super great uh, graveyard he feels like that's safe enough to do fortunately for him we do have a means of making Winda here but he is going to be able to outplay us it looks like because he has the blue eyes jet dragon which can actually bounce the window so here we're going to go ahead and activate rise to full height and then uh, chain a paleozoic trap in the graveyard he's going to negate that with the spirit dragon unfortunately what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get a paleozoic trap on the field 
to uh, target with rise to full height to try and keep the window safe. But um, yeah, let's see what happens here. We're going to activate the needle bug nest, try and mill five. But before that happens, we are going to um, activate the dynamistress effect in graveyard to get it onto the field. And we actually don't hit anything anything impactful here. So it looks like this game is going to be very difficult for us to win. And our opponent is just drawing so many cards. He resolved trade in and pot of desires. And, you know, he has six cards in hand, which is just absurd. Uh, the only card he can attack here is Dynamistress, but he is going to be able to bounce the window with the threat weapon. So we are a little bit SOL here. The Lava Golem isn't going to be enough, and we are going to take the L in game one. Okay, so in game two, we are going to open pretty insane with the Morella, Terraforming, Canadia, Shiren, and Havnus. And our opponent is going to open up two copies of Imperm, two copies of Blue Eyes, and a single copy of Traden. So a little bit of an awkward hand for him, but he does have two defensive tools that he can use against us. So let's go ahead and start and see how this plays out. We are going to activate the Terraforming to start our turn to search out the Pearl of Rhino. Activate the Pearl of Rhino to add the Rhino Heart, normal summon the Rhino Heart that is going to be met with an Imperm, so we aren't going to get the Foolish there. Then we'll activate the Shiren, special summon the Shiren, mill three cards. Uh, we actually mill very insane here. We pitch the Havnus for the effect of the Shiren, and then we mill Beast, Dynamistress, and Scream. So we're going to trigger all three of the uh, Havnus and the Beast, as well as the Scream. So we'll go ahead and play this out, see how this chain resolves. So we're going to make Winda here, get a search for the Selic. And then get a draw, and then we'll go ahead and make the Time Thief Redoer to round off our turn. So we do have the Shiren stacked underneath the Redoer so that we can have access to a fusion play during our opponent's turn here. So our opponent is going to start off with a trade-in because his hand is uh, definitely on the south side of playable. But he does draw into the evenly match, which is pretty insane here. So this deck definitely struggles against evenly match. So he's going to go ahead and go into the battle phase, activate the evenly match at the end. We're going to chain the Morella to that to get a Tierlemans card sent to the graveyard. And then we'll use the Time Thief Redoer to get it off the field and detach the Shiren as part of the effect. We'll go ahead and let that evenly match resolved. We'll get the Havna Search since we uh, got the Sulik into the graveyard by card effect. So we're not completely screwed here. If our opponent tried to do anything else, we could... Use Havnus to special summon it onto the field, and then use Selic to get a monster effect negation out there. So, yeah, uh, honestly not too bad. During the end phase, we have the Time Thief Redoer that we can bring back, and we can just activate the Selic to get a Paleozoic Trap special summoned out from our graveyard so that we can have potential access to a uh, play that requires a level 2 monster. So, during the... Standby phase, we'll use the Time Thief Redoer to grab a card. Fortunately enough for us, we get a spell card that we can detach to draw a card, which always feels really insane. We'll go ahead and activate the Scream. Normal Summon Rhino Heart, chain, chain Link 1 Rhino Heart, Chain Link 2 Scream. He's going to Imperm that, but really not going to be enough here. We're going to go ahead and mill 3. We can go into the Sprite Sprint. Send them early, get a Fusion play going here. We can actually go for the Kaleido Heart here. Use that Kaleido Heart to shuffle back whatever trap, spell trap card he had set there and get in, get in for some damage here. Set the Rise to Full Height and we're feeling pretty good about this one. Uh, our opponent just scoops it up because he has no more playable cards in hand really. So let's go ahead and get into the third game. Okay, so for game three, we are going to be playing going second. We have a Terraforming, Shiren, Lava Golem, Rise to Full Height, and Sulik. So our hand is very good, and our opponent's hand is also not too bad itself. He's got the Blue Eyes Alternative White, Sage, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Galaxy Soldier, and Melody of Awakening Dragon. So he's going to go ahead and start by firing off the Sage with Eyes of Blue, searching the White Stone of Legend, and then activating the Melody of Awakening Dragon. That is going to resolve. He'll get the double search, and then he'll activate the White Stone of the Legend effect in a separate chain to get another Blue Eyes from deck to hand. So he'll go ahead and activate Galaxy Soldier here, pitching the Blue Eyes, and activating this effect to search another Galaxy Soldier. A special summon out the Blue Eyes Alternative White, and then Link or Synchro Summon into the Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. Activate the other Galaxy Soldier here. XC Summon into the Cyber Dragon Nova and then into Infinity. So he has a negate. He has a dis disruptive effect of Blue Eye Spirit Dragon. But honestly, not the greatest end board. Um, this is really is not going to be a problem for us to break here. And Lava Golem is pretty much going to take care of it by itself. So he's going to activate the Spirit Dragon to tag into the Azurize. And then we are just going to summon the Lava Golem and pretty much 
just go off here because our opponent has nothing left that they can do, and this really should be wrapped. Um, this wasn't the greatest game, but we're just going to hop off here, mill a bunch of cards, you know, doing what Tyrannus does best, going into Garuda. can actually OTK here. Definitely should have activated the screen, but I got a little bit antsy. It's not going to matter because we can just easily set up lethal here with our, um, you know, full power tier limits. Yeah, you know, Garua gets into double damage, so we're 4,000 plus 2,000 plus 2,800. It's going to be game here. So that is it for the gameplay, guys. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. But with that, I am going to leave you with a peace out. Have a nice day and goodbye.